this video, we'll be painting a watercolor mixing chart. This is a great exercise to do if you are new to watercolors and just getting to know your paints. This will cover some of the basics in color theory. And I'll be using a set of 12 colors. And you can see how from each of these mixes, you can get a huge variety of colors. And even when you vary up your saturation, which means that you can use a bit more water and dilute that color, you can get a really lovely lighter color as well. This is part of my color theory and mixing basics for beginners. I'll take you step by step, so grab your supplies and let's get started. All right, so as always, we'll start with high quality professional watercolor paper. This is cold press and it's 100% cotton. I recommend doing this on quality paper so that you can get an accurate result of your color mixes. This particular watercolor pad that I'm using is sealed. It's a block. And so what that means is the paper won't buckle. It'll be sealed and stay flat. So if you're using a separate sheet that's loose, you may want to tape down your edges because we will be using quite a bit of water. My grid that I'm laying out here needs to include 12 colors. So depending on how many colors you have, you'll want to allocate enough squares or spaces. I'm using a T-square ruler to keep the lines as straight as possible. This doesn't have to be perfect. You could also just do wiggly little swatches and that would get the job done as well. But for this exercise and the demonstration for this video, I want to make it pretty accurate as possible. One thing to remember is to keep space for labeling your colors so that when you go back, you'll know exactly which colors are in which row. Because I have a narrow space on the top, I'll just be using an abbreviation for that part, but I'll be writing out the full color name on the left column. So you'll need some jars of water to rinse your colors. I have a flat brush here that I'm going to be using. I'll probably use the medium size that is appropriate for the shape of this square. Of course, use any brush you're comfortable with. For me, getting a even wash is easier in this case with a flat brush. The next step would be to arrange your colors in the order that you would like. I have another video where I went through each of these swatches. These are the Daniel Smith dot cards. So you can definitely check out that video if you're interested in seeing all of the colors that they have available. And the order of the colors are roughly following the same order on these dot cards. Then go ahead and label all your colors so that you don't get lost in the process when you are mixing. And your order of the colors are going to be exactly the same across the side as they are across the top. I have a lid here that I'll be using for all my mixes. It's a plastic lid and I'm going to be making all my different color combinations on this. Okay, also keep a paper towel on hand. You can dab off any extra water or paint on that. All right, so the one thing to remember is that the diagonal on each of these row column meeting points is going to be just a straight paint out of your tube. So there are no mixes along that diagonal. So the column and the row match up. All right, so to also make this easier, I'm going to put these colors in the same order that they're listed on my sheet. Just putting a tiny dot would be enough. A little bit goes a long way. Okay, so I ran out of room along the bottom, so I'm continuing on the top row here. And just, I will have to remember that those last three are actually at the top of the palette. The first color I am swatching here is Hansa Yellow Light. So you'll see that that color is going to be strung along the bottom half. I'm kind of making a diagonal transition where it's saturated along the left corner and then the right corner is gonna be the diluted version of that color. And then following along on the diagonal, New Gamboge, that's next. 
and because New Gamboge is across the top also in the second position, that would go in your second row, second column position. You're going to take each of these colors as their pure color without any mixes and put them along that diagonal where the name matches on the left column and the name matches on the top row. And then all your mixes from that color will go in the other squares. The reason I'm not just doing a flat saturation for this color is because sometimes watercolors will dry differently depending on if they're more transparent and diluted. And so to see that property, the bottom half of this chart will be the opaque version or as strong as possible of a color. And then the top right corner is going to be the lighter diluted version of each color mix. Once the diagonal is done, we can start with our mixes. It's nice to have that center line done so that we can use that as a reference when we put in the other color mixes. Okay, so now moving on to the mixes. So we're going to look across both the column and the row. So there's actually going to be a duplicate square because when you mix, for example, Hansa Yellow Light with New Gamboge, there's two spots for that mix. One is in the first column, second row. One is in the first row, second column. And that's why I'm doing a saturated version for that column. And on the upper row, the second one, it'll be the diluted version. And that way you're not really wasting that space. You're getting a dark version and a light version of each color mix. All right, so for the third one in this column, it's Pyrrole Scarlet. And you look across the top, it says Hansa Yellow Light. So that mix is going to go in this square. Again, it'll be the saturated version. And then I'll take that same mix and put it in the duplicate square as a diluted version into the first row third column because that's the duplicate mix. If you've never created a color chart before, I highly recommend just going slow, taking your time, putting on some good music, get a cup of coffee or tea. This is going to be a meditative process. It's actually really fun to not have to worry about an actual composition or subject matter. All we're doing is exploring different color mixes and it's really therapeutic to actually paint little squares. I have a free template that you can also download and that might help you when you are planning out your colors. Feel free to grab that. I'll leave the link in the description. This is a video that is part of a color series and so all the color guides and templates are all together. So if you would like, keep that on hand and keep it as a reference. Okay, so what I'm doing here is taking little sections of the next color and I'm pre-planning different sections. So I've got two through four. So I've got four little washes here going and all I'm going to do is add the mixes into each of these to create that combination color. It's just one extra 
step missing so I'm not rinsing my brush as often and so it's saving a little bit of time in between each color combination. When I'm doing the diluted version of each of these colors, I'm just swishing my brush in that water once or twice and I'm not re-dipping into the color originally. That way it gives you a really light translucent wash. Okay, so this row here is the Quinn Rose and mixing with the Mayan Blue Genuine makes a really pretty purple color. And then the one right underneath it is the Jedi Genuine it makes a really lovely dark color so if you're looking for a good shadow color this is a beautiful mix and even the diluted version is a really pretty soft gray Okay, you may find that you need to refresh your water, so I changed that out and I want to keep my colors as clean as possible. I also wiped down my palette and I prepared it for a new row of mixes. Plastic palettes do tend to stain a little bit, so you're seeing some of that show through uh, on that palette, but that's not affecting the color because it's fully dry and wiped down. And again, I'm making five little swatches here for the next five little squares, and this will save time when I am going to rinse and make my mixes. This is a great exercise as well to see different properties of the watercolor. For example, when I'm using Thalo Blue, it's an extremely strong color. So only a touch is needed. If you were to do equal parts of Thalo with a different color, that Thalo Blue would probably overpower the color. So oftentimes you'll notice that you'll need to play around with the different proportions and the ratios of your color mixes. And that's one fun thing that you can discover about your particular set of watercolors. And you can see as I do more of the Hematite Genuine, that's the last row along the bottom. That is a paint color that's very granulated. So some of those minerals are separating and you can actually see that Pretty clearly in that third column at the very bottom, that's the Pyrrole Scarlet Mix with Hematite Genuine. Okay, setting up for a new row of mixes. This is the Amethyst Genuine. And I'm going ahead and putting six little areas on the palette for my six colors to mix those out. All right, so this is the whole chart. And as you can see close up that bottom row, which is the hematite genuine, you can see easier now that each of those has a bit more granulation. I also really love seeing the light versions because when you're doing watercolor layers and glazing techniques, it's really nice to see the most translucent color washes. So when you do this, keep that in mind that as you layer, you'll get the stronger color. If you keep it light, you'll get that more translucent diluted color. I'll also go through and label each of these colors along the side and along the top.
And you can also go through and erase any pencil lines. Once your watercolors have dried, I would wait for them to dry 100% before doing this step. This was a really fun exercise to do. I hope you painted along. I hope you enjoyed it and you discovered more fun mixes with your set of watercolors as well. If you'd like to learn more about watercolor properties and testing your colors, check out my swatch card video. In this video, I'll take you step by step and we'll create these cards and do all of our testing. There are so many properties to watercolors, whether they're granulating or staining or if you can do what on what techniques, there are different things to look for and this is a nice reference to have on hand.